morning, everybody. Ready to worship? Let him turn it in your favor. Watch him work it for your good. He's not done with what he started. He's not done until it's good. Let him turn it Allison's worshiping Brenda Hart over here and wasn't paying attention. Are you glad fear is not your future? Fear doesn't write your story and it has no business making and taking up space in your mind. Anybody else feel me in the room when you feel fear coming and fear squeezes? Anybody else has felt squeezed this week? Oh, y'all are not going to leave me up here by myself. 
When fear comes, it has a way of just squeezing you and all of a sudden your chest feels so tight. And I am so thankful that I serve a God that says, I didn't give you a story of fear. And I didn't give you a story of anxiety. And I didn't give you a story that pins up your chest and tightens your breath. But he says in his word that he came to give us life and life in abundance. And it means that I get to breathe a little bit deeper today. Amen. Amen. Put some new life in your lungs today. Breathe it in that he did not give you a story of fear. He didn't give you a story of fear. He came to give you a story of goodness and of peace and of joy and prosperity. It just means he's got really good things for you and you don't have to put up with all the junk. And aren't you thankful? If that doesn't put some praise in your heart today, I don't know if anything will. But I want to welcome you to church. And we believe church around here, it shouldn't just be something religiously that we do. But church is really a relationship. It's where we gather together and it's where we take just a few minutes before we kickstart a new week. Just to say, God, you are my God. So I don't know what your life looks like today, but I'm sure glad that you're here with us. So before we do anything else, we're just going to pray. I know God's already in the room and I know he's already working. And we're just going to believe that whatever you need today from your father, you're going to get. That's our prayer. So dear Jesus, we thank you for who you are. God, I thank you that you see us and you didn't come to give us a life full of fear. God, I thank you that fear and worry are not from you. They don't look like you. You didn't put them on my life. So Jesus, I pray today that as your presence comes into this house, Father, that you would just break us free from anything that's not of you. God, any thought, anything we've been worried about, God, that it would just fall to the wayside today as we get in your presence and we focus on you and your goodness. Lord God, I didn't come in this place today to leave the same way I came in. But Father, I want to leave changed and I want to leave knowing I've been in your presence. So God, we give you these next few moments and we ask that you would move and that you would move in my life. Speak to hearts today, Jesus. God, it is by your word that we are changed. So we give you permission. I give you space and I create margin in my heart today. Father, just to say, have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, and Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Just wanna speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Cause I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. Yeah. 
Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, and Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Come on, church, sing this out. Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, and Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. The cross has the fire.
the situation in your life, where you're at, maybe where you're going, you're not quite sure, but you, you feel you're on this journey, right? Sometimes as Pastor Alex, like you might be even scared and there's like this tightness. But the cross has the final word. Like sometimes we sing songs and we get into this rhythm or we get into this just like routine. It's like, oh, I'm just reading words. But Jesus hung on the cross. He died so that whatever you are going through, the sicknesses in your life, the diseases that are trying to attack your body or your mind, the spirits coming against your family and your friends, the cross has that final word. See, Jesus came as a baby like you and me into the earth. He grew up on this earth. He understood this earth, and yet he still chose, seeing all the negative, all the, the hatred in the world, he still chose for the joy set before him to die on the cross because he knew that that was the final word for you, for me. The same things that were going on 2,000 years ago are the same things we're battling today, maybe just in a different way, but it's the same thing. I want to tell you, Jesus loves you so much. God loves you so much that he sent his son to die for you so that that battle you're going through, that that moment in your life, that depression that you're trying to shake, Jesus died for you. I want to pray for you guys. With every head bowed and every eye closed, if you're in here today and you say, Pastor Justin, I just, I need prayer. I'm going through something. You might not even know what it is. You just know something's off. I'm going to tell you, God is here. The Spirit of the Lord is here. The same power that raised Christ from the dead dwells in this room. And He wants to work in you and through you. And I just want to pray for you. I want to pray over you. I want to believe with you today that the cross has the final word, that that, that healing, that, that deliverance, that protection, that comfort, that peace gets to be upon your life. So before I pray, though, that's what I want to ask. If that's you, say, yeah, Pastor Justin, that's me. I, I'm, I'm sitting here. I'm, I'm, I'm believing that I need that. I want that. I want to know that I know. I want that answer. I want that God to reveal and move in my life. If that's you, I'm just going to ask you just to raise your hand because I want to know who I'm praying for. I want to speak over your life. see those hands. God sees those hands. I'm just going to speak the blood of Jesus. I'm going to speak the life over your life. And today know that God sees you and he hears you and he's covering you and he's there and he loves you. So Father God, I thank you for each and every person in this room who raised their hand and the people who thought I should raise my hand, but they were even maybe a little timid. I want to speak to their hearts and I just say, God, have your way in their lives move in their situations. I speak the mind of Christ over each and every person. I speak the blood of Jesus and the healing to flow through their body. I speak to anxiety and mental. I just say that you have to go and that they have exactly the body and the mind that God created in their lives. I speak the blood of Jesus over them, over every situation, over friends and family and the people in their lives. I say whatever you're going through in the name of Jesus to be gone. Lord, that you give us the victory and everywhere our feet tread, you said we have dominion and I declare dominion in their lives right now in Jesus' mighty name. God, I thank you that you are speaking into their hearts, into their minds. You're putting clarity into what they need to do. God, I speak to marriages to be restored, to be strengthened, that bond to grow stronger. I call husbands and wives back into the kingdom of God and to the church. And I say, stand strong. God, I thank you right now that our children and our children's children 
know you and no other voice shall they follow. God, the word said that if we raise them up right, they will not depart. So we call them back now in Jesus' mighty name into the kingdom. God, I thank you that your provision is upon people's lives, that you are providing above and beyond. Lord, we declare your works to be done in the mighty name of Jesus. Everybody says, amen. We're just getting started, I'm having fun. Well, my name's Pastor Justin. I do the outreach, the missions here. Uh, I just wanna say thank you for letting me take like three minutes and just speak into some people's lives. If that was you, if you're believing it, if you receive it, man, let someone know, man, like today is the beginning because the cross does have the final word on whatever you're going through, whatever that situation is. If everything is just perfect in your life, Find somebody and let them know how good God is, how great things are in your life. Because, man, testimonies help people get through tests. So, real quick, take 25 seconds. Sometimes 30 seconds is too long. So 25 Well, what a powerful way for us to start church this morning. My name is Paige. I'm our student pastor here at Hope Point Church. And I'm so excited that you are joining us for church online. Just like everybody in there is meeting and greeting and sharing stories of God's goodness, I want to encourage you guys, let us know that you're here in the comments. Say hey, say what's up. Drop a praise report from this week. Our goal is that this isn't just a video that you watch online, but you are a part of church. You are the church. And this month here at Hope Point Church, we're talking about because of you, we're learning about the mission of Hope Point Church, and we're seeing all that God is doing here. So let us know, what's God doing in your life this week? Throw it in the comments. Drop an encouragement for the other people that might be watching online. If you have any prayer requests this week, go ahead and message them to us. We'd love to pray over you and with you this week. Thank you for joining us for Church Online. Grab your Bible and your notebook because we're about to go into the sanctuary and start service. Taking your seats, I just want to talk to you guys real quick. Man, first off, worship band, thank you guys. And girl, who is up here? Girls, sorry. I, there's two of you. I, I, I promise I can count. Man, sometimes I just want to encourage you, worship is, it's not just a thing, it's the thing. So, I mean, if you're going through something or you don't know what to do or you're not sure where to go, man, just flip on worship music in your car, at your home, at your work, put it on, and I guarantee you the atmosphere will change. So, that has nothing to do with why I'm up here. I just wanted to take a minute and tell the worship team, thank you guys for what you're doing. Welcome to Hope Point Church. Like I said earlier, my name is Pastor Justin. I just want to say I'm super excited you are here. We are super awesome and grateful that you came. And the odds are you guys showed up because you were somehow invited or you found us on Google or like AOL, which is still a thing I found out. Like it's still out there. Um, but it's what I would like to, you guys to do underneath your seats, in the seat back in front of you or on the little tables out in the lobby. There are invites invite someone to church. Let them know, like, not, hey, I have a seat for you, but like, I got a spot beside me. I would love you to come and be a part of church. Like 80% of people who come to church are come because they have been invited. So if you're not inviting, there's like 80% of people out there who ain't ever going to show up. So go invite people. Side note, we got new pins. So some of you guys might get to be all fancy with us. Take a pin with you. Yeah, they're we're not that fancy. We're, we're, we ain't that fancy, girl. Is that the Sharpie? No, it, it, it's, the, it's the Sharpay. So um, anyway, new pins. Those pins are great for filling out connect cards. Um, these are around you as well. There's a nice little packet there. It's what this is, it's your, it's your information that we want to use to be able to believe and speak over your life. That's the only reason we have your information is so that we can be a part of your life. It goes nowhere but in these four walls. So fill this out. Let us know if it's your first time, your second time, third time, how you heard about us because we like, to, we like stats. We're a statistical kind of people and we like to follow them. And let us know how we can believe and be a part of your life. And the way you do that is on the back of those cards, there are prayer requests, 
and praise reports because if something you've been believing for and actually happens, we want to know about that too. Let's celebrate life together. It's awesome when miracles happen. Raise your hand if you've experienced a miracle anytime this year. Cool. If you haven't experienced a miracle, we're believing still. We got time. Tis the season. Um, it's Christmas time. We're, we're over that hump. We're there, man. Um, I love Christmas. And then finally, there are offering envelopes. There's multiple ways to give. Uh, I think we throw them up. There we go. You can do cash, check. Some of you don't even know what cash is. That's cool. You can go to our app. Uh, you can go to Hope Point KC, our website. You can even text to give. I found out we have that option. Didn't even know it. It's an option. It's out there. Um, but let me just kind of explain. Sometimes people are always like, oh, the church just wants money. Man, I'm going to tell you, there are people out there who need what you have. And yes, the church gets to be like this cool vessel for God to use and put his stuff on earth. I'm going to read you a scripture. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 10 says, Now he who provides seed for the sower and bread for food will provide and multiply your seed for sowing. That is your resources. And increase the harvest of your righteousness, which shows itself in active goodness, kindness, and love. See, Pastor Josh always says that God didn't make a mistake when he made 24 hours in a day, right? Like he had a plan. We all have the same amount of time. And that's one of your resources. That's one of the things you get to sow is you, you get to sow your time, your energy. Maybe you have an amazing abundance of finances. Maybe you're believing for an amazing abundance of finances. You have that resource of finances that you get to sow. And as you sow your resources into God's kingdom, the, the scripture is very clear that God's going to start multiplying what you sow. See, if you want an apple tree, you have to plant an apple seed, Right? So if you want something specific in your life, you got to start planting seeds to receive what you're going to sow. That's kind of a basic principle. So I want to encourage you today, tomorrow, this week, this month, by the end of the year, figure out what you have that God has generously given you and let's learn how to sow it. We were talking last night, I met... Uh, motivate KC up here, which if you don't know, they do the haircuts for turkeys with Nate's Barbershop. And we filled the back lounge up with enough canned goods and desserts and cookies and gravies and mashed potatoes and all of this stuff that they have decided to make over a hundred Thanksgiving meals for people in Olathe. Man, Hope Point loves this so much. Every year we decide we're going to be a part of it. We're going to do what we can. So as soon as service is over, well, not as soon as service is over, today about 2 o'clock we're going to build all 100 bags out there in the lobby. And then tomorrow we get to deliver all of those bags to the schools, to people in need. We get to drop them off. And people get blessed because a couple of people said, you know what? I have a resource. I have a time. I have an ability. I have a skill. And they sew it. And then it's just multiplying. The first year is like, let's do, let's do 50. And now they're over 100. And every time you go out, every time you put your faith out, it's crazy how things start coming back. Man, Hope Point is putting a decision out. Next year, we are reaching some schools. Uh, we, we met with one school. We became their faith-based partner. And then through that, literally, the lady who's in charge of all of the homeless kids and the less fortunate kids and the kids who are in need in the Olathe School District reached out and said, are you guys willing to help more? And we're like, if you don't know Pastor Josh and myself, like if someone's in need, it's like, we'll, we'll do it. We'll figure it out, man. So we've met with two schools already. There's a third one coming. And like, we're just finding out there are 244 kids in Olathe School Districts who are homeless. We're in Johnson County, and there are 244 kids without a home. And I was like, describe homeless. She's like, they're living in a car. There's a family of eight I'm going to visit who's in someone's garage. Like, that's what we do. We take that and say, we're, we're, we're going to do our best, and we're going to tackle it. I don't know how. That's what Hope Point does. 
So when you give your time, your energy, your resources, know that we're, we're doing it. We're, we're not trying to drive fancy cars or anything like that. Like, no, we're, we're reaching people. And you get to be a part of it. So pray and decide what you can give, whether it's your time, your resources, your energy. And as you give, know that God's going to return that same seed back into your life and he's going to multiply it in your life. I'm going to pray real quick. Usher's is going to come forward and collect the offering. So, Father God, I thank you for each and every seed sown. God, I thank you that it goes out into good ground and it returns a great harvest. That every person who sows their time, their energy, their resources, God, that they receive an abundance of those things so that they get to glorify your kingdom and then turn around and do it again so that we get to advance this kingdom and take back what the devil is trying to take from us. And we just get to say, all of this is for the glory of God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. All Hope students are invited to come hang out at Kyle and I's house on Sunday, November 19th at 6.30. We're having a bonfire and movie night. What you're going to want to bring is a blanket or lawn chair to sit on, something to keep warm with, and a friend. We're going to have s'mores, snacks, watch a movie together, and just have a great time at the Hope Students Bonfire and Movie Night on Sunday, November 19th. Ladies, we are just a couple weeks away from our ladies' brunch happening on December the 2nd. And I am so excited. The Women of Hope lead team has been planning an amazing event for you. And I will say it's going to be like nothing else we've ever done here at Hope Point Church. It's truly going to be an amazing morning. And brunch is just the icing on the cake. We're going to have two power-packed Holy Spirit-led sessions that I really do believe is going to change your life. Tickets are for sale. Spots are filling up. Don't wait. Invite your friends. Sit together at your tables and come with an expectant heart. You will leave well loved and well fed. And I can't wait to see you on December 2nd for our ladies brunch. Hey, I'm Olivia, and I'm excited to invite all students grades 6 through 12 to Hope Students on November 15th. We will be continuing our awesome series called Jesus Over Everything. And following service, we'll be having a popcorn bar. So grab a bowl of popcorn, add your favorite toppings, and I cannot wait to meet you on Wednesday, November 15th at Hope Students. My name is Paige, and my husband Kyle and I want to invite anybody ages 18 or older to join the Adventure Club. This is a unique life group where we focus on creating friendships and memories with each other. Every month we do something new. So if you want to be in on the fun, come talk to me after service or join the Adventure Club on our Hope Point website. We cannot wait to go on adventures with you. Life before Hope Point, um, if I'm being honest, was full of anger, hurt, despair, loneliness. Um, so spring of 2022, my husband of almost 25 years um, was making choices I didn't agree with um, and he was unwilling to change his lifestyle to, to stay with his family. And so he moved out June 1st of 2022. Um, and then June of 2023, my daughter was supposed to get married and that was called off for various reasons eight weeks before that. So. You know, the, the last year, year and a half have just been very tough. So I was invited to Hope Point um, from a coworker, Corinne um, and Lisa. And they, I had overheard them several times talking about going to church together and ladies events. And, um, and I was in the process of looking for a church. And so they were both, you know, very eager to invite me and have me come. That next Sunday I came and it it was just perfect. So the first thing I noticed about Hope Point my, when I um, arrived was just the welcome and the openness. And I felt they were trying to get to know me as a person. Um, and just, I felt like it was home and you know, that I didn't have to keep looking, that this was where I belonged. I mean, it always helps to, to go to church with a friend and you know they can introduce you to people but just every everyone I met wanted to know about me I wasn't just another number or face in the crowd and even to you know the minute I left 
I got the biggest hug from Josh and he'd never met me before, you know, and that's, I hadn't experienced that before and it just felt, you know, the worship, you know, almost brought me to tears and just the sermon was exactly what I needed on that day and just all the pieces fell into place. So the biggest thing I have felt since going to Hope Point um, as far as like God moving in my life is just a sense of peace and that all started to be honest with that hug from Josh like when I got that hug it was like God was telling me these people here they've got your back um, you're not alone you don't have to feel alone you don't have to feel lonely um, this is you know this is where I've put you and and these people are gonna be your people um, so my life has changed since um, finding Hope Point because of the things that you know I've talked about with I have a network I have people I can reach out to um, I know the church is going to be there for me praying um, supporting me anything I need um, and I was so alone and so sad um, and that's that's not there anymore I just I walk in every Sunday and get all the hugs and all the love and I know I could reach out to any one of those people even if they've never met me before and I, and I would get whatever I needed that day and it's it's a great feeling because of you hope point I am full of hope I am full of life I am no longer feeling lonely or scared or hurt and I know I have support in anything I do Oh, give her a hand, Tracy, we love you. These videos are my favorite. Um, we kicked off last week with Vicki Smith, and she said something so sweet. She said, I wrote it down. She said, Hope Point brought Jesus to my heart. I don't know if there's a better testimony out there than that. And then this week, which you'll figure out why here in a minute, you said these people are going to be your people. And all I got to say is, yes, we are. And you're stuck with us forever. So um, I'm not the bearded Josh Cody today. And uh, yeah, we'll just get that out of the way. But my sweet husband took um, our boys on a, we'll call it a manhood camping trip. They're figuring out how to be men. I actually grabbed a picture. You can throw that up. They're uh, deep down in the um, great unknown of Oklahoma. Are they, it's not up. I'll move on. It's okay. Um, there it is. So they're, they're fishing and hunting and hiking, and Kate is doing fire starting competitions with his father to see who can get the fire started the fastest. And they're becoming men. So I'm so thankful to have a husband who invests in my sons and teaches them just how to be the men that God created them to be. It's awesome. So uh, y'all are stuck with me today. Everybody said amen. All right. So I get to speak to you on part two of uh, because of you. And I'm, I'm pretty excited because I'm preaching on the power of your yes today. And before we do anything else, I think we have a really... Um, weighty yes in the room someone who gave probably one of the highest yeses you can give and that's our veterans so if you're in the room i'm not you don't have to stand but i want to honor you today and just thank you right up front maybe you have a son a nephew niece daughter whoever it may be if you have someone in your family who's serving we want to honor you and say thank you so would you all please just help me as we applaud and say thank you for your service thank you for what you do and it truly is because of your yes that we are free. And so I really do commend you and honor you today. So, um, well, this series is going to be great. We've been uh, planning this series for a while, getting our stories lined up, and it's just been so good. So Josh laid the groundwork for us last week. I get to layer it today. And so um, I want to go ahead and do this before we even get started. I just want to open with a word of prayer. I was feeling in my heart during worship today, there's that story in the Bible with the woman of, uh, with the issue of blood and she ran up and she touched the hem of his garment and Jesus looked back at her and said, your faith has made you whole. Remember that story? And as I was thinking that today, that I just felt in my heart today that I feel like the Lord is proud of our faith today. It's so beautiful when you stop and you think that God looks upon our church and says, man, I just love the faith in the room today. 
And so I want to pray with you as we get started and just open up our hearts to the word of God today. Is that okay? All right. Dear Jesus, we thank you for who you are. God, I thank you for the faith that you've put in our hearts. God, that it says that you have put a measure of faith in our hearts, Father, to please you. So God, I pray today, Father, that the faith in this room is pleasing to your heart. God, we give you permission to open our minds, open our ears to your word. God, I pray and I thank you now for the power that you've given us in the word of God, that it is alive and it is active and it's good for my heart. So God, I thank you today that I'm not just going to hear it, but Father, I'm going to obey what you've given us. I want to obey what you've given me. I want to obey your truth. I want to be set free from the ways of this world. Father, I know normal is not working, so God, I need something that's not normal. So, Father, we give you these next few moments, and I really do ask, Lord, that you have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I'm going to share with you a secret obsession of mine that I'm not exactly proud of. And when I say not exactly proud of, how many of you all know that there's things that are okay for you to do, you just don't want anybody else to know that you do them? Anybody got stuff like that? So I know it's this way because I, I have, a, you know how most men have a chair in their home? Well, Josh doesn't have a chair. I have a chair. So I was sitting in my chair, and I was scrolling, and this video comes up in my feed. And if any time one of these videos comes up in my feed, I have to watch it. It does not matter if this clip is one minute long or 15 minutes long. I am going to watch it. And uh, my, my son walked up behind me and kind of caught me off guard. And before I even knew it, I went, whoop, because I didn't want him to see I was watching it. So he's like, what are you doing? And I was like, nothing, nothing. So he walks away, and I go right back to it. So I'm going to share my little obsession with you. Have you ever heard of a little show called Say Yes to the Dress? I am obsessed with Say Yes to the Dress. I want to see all the pretty dresses. I want to know which one they picked. And it does not matter. It can even be one I've seen before. And I'm still going to rewatch it and go through my mind of what dress I would have picked. Does anybody, any girl in the room agree with me? All right? We want to know. We love dresses. And so I was sitting there and, yes, okay, it's funny. But I love it. I, I can't even explain it. I am obsessed with all these dresses. And so today, as he gave me the opportunity to speak on your yes and the power of your yes, I was thinking about say yes to the dress. And today is not going to be say yes to the dress. It's more going to be say yes to the mess. Okay? Say yes to the mess. See, some of y'all are afraid already and you don't even know why. And it's okay. We're just in this together. But we're going to say yes to the mess today. And so I want you to turn to your neighbor. Before we get started, I want to say, does God have your yes? Does God have your yes? All right, we're going to start in 2 Corinthians chapter 1. The Apostle Paul is having to defend himself to the church that he formed. The Apostle Paul is defending himself to the church he created. Which makes me wonder, have you ever had to argue with a thing that you created? Like, have you ever wanted to slap your kids across the room? All right? I feel like that's how Paul felt in this moment. Here he is. This is the Apostle Paul we're talking about. And here he is happening to defend himself and defend his words and his actions. So Paul and the church had had a disagreement. He was supposed to stay at this particular church for 18 minutes or 18 months, not minutes, 18 months, and he changed his mind, and he wasn't able to go with them, and the church got their feelings hurt, okay? They really wanted him to come, and so this church had the audacity to nickname Apostle Paul the Fickle Apostle. The Fickle Apostle. How petty, Okay, we're talking the ultimate pettiness here. And so this is the guy, the same guy that built the early church, wrote two thirds of the New Testament and in countless miracles, not to be, you know, don't forget the fact he lived through two shipwrecks. Like this is the apostle Paul and they have the audacity to call him the fickle apostle. So here's just a side note for us. Hope Point Church, we are not going to be a petty church. Amen. Don't be petty. Like, don't be petty. So in this portion of scripture, he's defending himself and the nickname that he has falsely earned. 
by changing his plans from what he intended to do to what God had purposed for him to do. And sometimes there's a difference between what you intend to do and what God has purposed for you to do. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, we're going to start in verse 15. It says, because I was sure of this, I wanted to come to you first so that you might have a second experience of grace. All that's saying is Paul wanted to go to their church twice. He knew that he loved being with them and they loved being with him. He wanted a second experience. He said, I wanted to visit you on my way to Macedonia and to come back to you from Macedonia. And you have sent me on my way to Judea. While I was vacillating when, uh, was I, (laughs) sorry guys, was I vacillating when I wanted to do this? Another version said, do you think that I made these plans without really thinking? Do I make my plans according to the flesh, ready to say yes, yes, and no, no at the same time? As surely as God is faithful, our word to you has not been yes and no. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, whom we proclaimed among you, Silas, Timothy, and I, was not yes and no, but in him it is always yes. For all the promises of God find their yes in him. That is why it is through him that we utter our amen to God for his glory. And it is God who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us and who has also put a seal on us and given us his spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. Before we launch into this whole thing about our responsibility, I need you to understand first and foremost is that God has already given you his best yes. That the moment that you said yes to Jesus and you gave him your heart and you gave him your life, his yes was immediate. And it wasn't just that it was good. It's the best he could give. So he gave you his best yes. He said yes to save you, yes to heal you, yes to free you, yes to redeem you, yes to fight for you, yes to fill you with his spirit. You have God's best yes. You have it. When you accepted him, it is his gift to you. You got his best yes. It is something that you apply in your life every day. You don't have to go and ask him to do these things for you. He says, I've already done it. I've already done it. You have my best yes. So we have God's yes, and it is permanent. It is everlasting, and it transfers from generation to generation. God's best yes never fades away. It is permanent, it is concrete, it is sturdy. You can trust it. I love Psalms 100 verse 5. It says, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. No matter what your life looks like or what season of change may come, God's answer is already yes. Yes. It does not matter what you go through. It does not matter how life changes. It doesn't matter how you change. God changes not. His answer is still yes. God's answer, God's yes, is settled. It's settled. Some of us always think that because we don't get cleaned up enough or we screwed up again or we did something that somehow that changed God. And God's saying, no, my yes with you is already settled. It's already done. It's not about your guilt, your shame. Guilt and shame are never from the Lord. The Lord says that he'll convict you with his Holy Spirit. But if you're struggling with guilt or shame over things that you've done, I'm here to tell you now that's not Jesus. Jesus came to break shame and to break guilt, to break those things off of you. So if you're dealing with that, you need a challenge. Who told you that? Like where, where did those thoughts come from? Because God's yes to you is already settled and it doesn't matter how screwed up or what you did or what you're going to do. His answer to you is still yes. He has, you have his yes. It's already done. It's already settled. So today I don't want to focus on the first yes of salvation and where that's a really good yes. It is not where our yeses stop. I want to focus on the lifetime of yeses that come after that yes, that first yes that you said to Jesus. See, this is a lot like getting married. 
I was, uh, again, going back to my say yes to the dress. I love watching that show, and I love watching them pick their dress and get married and all this stuff. But with no offense in my heart at all, the day that you say I do is one of the shallowest yeses you will give. Now, we love watching people get married, and we are so happy that they found love and all these things. But I'm here to tell you that that yes is not the greatest yes. For those in the room who've been married a minute, you know that you're five and you're 10 and you're eight and you're 22 and you're 37. All those years of yeses that you have come at a greater cost and a greater weight than when you stood at the altar and you said, I do. Anybody attest in the room? And this is why when you see someone who's been married 10, 20, 40, 60 years, you honor it because you know at the weight of that yes and what it meant that every day they chose that other person and said, I still give you my yes. There's a weight and there's a cost. See, most Christians believe that the Christian life is a one-time yes deal. They want that initial, God, just get me to heaven because I'm scared of death and I don't know where I'm going, so yes. And then they go about and they keep living their life exactly as they were. They think it's a one-time deal. Another way of saying that is they want the dress without the marriage. They feel like they got their ticket and now they're just done. And so they keep going. And I'm here to tell you today that God's got a lifetime of yeses for you. A lifetime of yeses. And it's up to us whether we choose them or we just let it go to the wayside. But if you say yes, it will fill your life life richly. And he will surround you with every spiritual blessing if you'll let him. See, when Josh asked me to marry him, he could have told me anything about him. And I still would have said yes. In a heartbeat. I was, I think as Bambi put it, I was Twitter pated. I was a wee bit smitten. And uh, I was just completely and totally in love with him. There's no other way to say that. And so as I was thinking about this, and we've been married 18 years. And yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, uh I haven't changed him yet, but I'll get there. Just kidding. (laughs) Well, we've been married 18 years, and I can honestly say that when we stood at the altar and said I do to each other, I had no idea what our journey would look like, the things that we would do together, where we would go. And it has been so full of so much blessing, like opportunity, if you want to call it opportunity, things that we've got to do together or travel or experience. Good grief. I got three beautiful kids. Like, they all came into this world at their own cost, but three beautiful children who love people, who love the church, who love the Lord. Three beautiful kids. We have this beautiful church that we're entrusted to pastor together. And all the people who fill it. Like our life has come with some tremendous blessing. And I know that as you look back over your life, you could say the same thing. That the Lord has greatly blessed you. But here's the thing about choosing to say yes to someone over and over and over and over is as much blessing and good as there is, there is also equally the same amount of disappointment, strife, illness, lack, because that's what makes your yes and the goodness, the good things so great. They go hand in hand. We say it like this, marriage is the greatest and the hardest thing you will ever do. It's just part of it. They go hand in hand. So when you give God your yes, Yes, it is great. And yes, it brings so much goodness to your life. But you also need to know that there's other things that are going to come on the other side of that yes. And that's what we're going to talk about today. But they go hand in hand. So the big question of today is why should you say yes? I've been wrestling with this question for probably two months. God, what do you, what do you tell people? Why should they say yes to Jesus? Well, you're good. Yes, he, you know. Like, and I'm going back and forth, and I'm like, I need, I need something solid. And I was praying one day, and he spoke to my heart and just said, what would you tell Grayson? Why should Grayson say yes, yes to me? 
And it was like, all of a sudden, I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, if you're going to make it that intimate with me, I want my kids to serve the Lord because they get this and this happens and this and this. And I just started taking down notes. So I've got three things for you today that not only would I tell you, but I'm implementing to teach my children. Because I want them above anything else, any other person in my world, I got to get my kids to say yes to Jesus. My prayer for them since before they were born is that God, we're a ministry and most pastor's kids do not have a good reputation. Can we be honest in here? The statistics for pastor's kids who stay in church is heartbreaking. It's, it's heartbreaking. And so before my kids were ever even born, I said, God, I want them to love you with their whole hearts. That anything, nothing comes before you to them that they're going to love the church and they're going to love the people of the church. That my kids are not going to struggle with church, church hurt or trauma, but they're going to know and they're going to say that church is always going to be a safe place. Always going to be a safe place. My love, kids love being here and they're here a lot. And they're going to love it and they're going to love people and they're never going to stray from it. So why should you say yes Here's number one. Blessing and favor is attached to your yes. Blessing and favor is attached to your yes. God will never reveal the whole picture of your life to you. Anybody else in the room was like, God, just show me a whole picture. Can I see the whole puzzle? Take out a piece. I'm fine with a piece missing, you know? Like, show me the puzzle. And he doesn't do it. And I think so many times we think he's withholding from us, but really he's protecting us. If he showed you the whole puzzle and everything that was coming with it, more than likely you'd be so overwhelmed and scared and fearful that your feet would never take a step at all. So God is a good father and it says that he gives us a piece at a time. God is a gentleman. He's always going to lead you. He's never going to push you. Thank the Lord he doesn't push me. Like he leads me. It says he's a good shepherd And then not only that, he doesn't lead me by leaps. He leads me by steps. Step by step. I think that oftentimes as we take these steps, it really is Jesus just saying, will you trust me here? Can you trust me here? And then as I trust him and I take that step, I got news for you. That's not the only yes you're going to have to give. Because then you're going to take that step and you're going to hit a new threshold. And then that yes is going to turn in, will you trust me here and take another step? And so you take another step. But when we turn our hearts off to receiving his promptings and we don't know it, we shut all that down. I love this verse. It's Psalms 37, 23. It says, the steps of a good and righteous man are directed. Another version says ordered and established by the Lord, and he delights in his ways and blesses his path. I want you to change that verse. We're going to take out the word step and put in the word yes. It says the yeses of a good and righteous man are directed. They are ordered and established by the Lord, and he delights in his ways and blesses his path. See, when you say yes to Jesus, he orders your steps. He orders your life, and he will go before you, and he will make a way for you. But here's the thing is that God is not a genie. He is a God. So you can't come before him and just say, just make this right. Just put me here. Just move me here. I just, I don't want to deal with that. No, God is always going to move you step by step in partnership with you. And this is where the role of the Holy Spirit comes in. You have God, the father, God, the son, God, the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is who comes and teaches your heart how to hear the instruction of the Lord and to follow his peace. So if ever you're coming up to a decision, you're like, God, I don't know what to do. You ask the Holy Spirit to show you that, what he's trying to tell you. And then you take the step. You got to work in partnership with God. It's how he moves. He wants to move in partnership because ultimately he's never going to manipulate you. God gave us the ultimate gift of free will. I do not understand a God who... I mean, if I were the Lord and Adam and Eve screwed up, it would have been so much easier just to wipe them from the face of the earth and start over and take away free will. Like you got to think God is so good and so loving to us that he gave us choice. 
that it is your choice to say yes to him. It is our honor to say yes to him. And he doesn't want to manipulate you. He presents you with a choice and he says, if you'll trust me and take a step, I'll bless you here. It's beautiful. Luke eleven thirteen. it says, if you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? How much more? I love to give my kids things. When my kids do something that I either don't even have to ask them to do or they go over and above what I ask them to do, what does your heart want to do as a parent? I spoil my kids rotten. You want to go out for coffee? Let's go out for coffee. You want to go get a seven brew fizz? Let's go. Like, what do you want to do? And let's go do it. It is my joy to reward. If I can do that as a human parent, imagine how much more your heavenly father wants to give you when you give him the best gift of an obedient and submissive heart to just say, God, here I am. What do you have for me? How can I say yes to you? What step do you have for me to take? Watch him reward you. I love this verse. I'm full of Allison's favorite verses today, just so y'all know. Psalm 25, 12 through 14. It says, who is the man who fears the Lord? Him will he instruct in the way that he should choose. His soul shall abide in well-being and his offspring shall inherit the land. The friendship of the Lord is for those who fear him and who make known to them his covenant. Can I give you the Allison translation of this verse? Okay, here's my Allison translation. My children inherit the land because of my obedience and my friendship with Jesus. Your children inherit the land. Your generations will change when you surrender your heart and give him your friendship and your obedience. It's beautiful. It's a promise. The blessing and favor that you're seeking comes from a life spent in friendship with Jesus. And the more you fall in love with Jesus, the more you realize that it's because he already gave me his yes, his best yes, without question, without hesitation, that I then in turn look back at him and say, okay, God, you have mine. It's my honor to give you my yes. See, I freely give it. I love that verse. It's our verse that we're doing for our legacy offering here in December. But it says that God loves a cheerful giver, one who doesn't give out of pressure. You know that we use that verse a lot for financial, but it's not just for finances. It's about the condition of your heart. God doesn't want your money. He wants your heart. It's always about your heart. God loves a cheerful giver. And when you give him your yeses cheerfully, My gosh, all the mamas in the room say amen because we live for those cheerful yeses. Your heart just swells with pride and you think, ma'am, I got the best kids in the whole world. That's how God sees you. Like when you give him your yes, your best yes, it's beautiful and watch what he'll do in your life. So here's real talk for you. This happened to me this week. Um, We have a situation in our family that honestly just kind of causes some, the second it's brought up, my heart is filled with fear. That's the easiest way I know how to, how to sum it up. It's just something that we're dealing with, something we're going through, and it's just sensitive. Anybody else had a sensitive situation? And um, I had a phone conversation about it and I hung up and my heart was just tense. I mean, my heart just felt like it was in a brace and I was like, God, I got to pray this out. Like, I've got to get this out of my chest. And so I dropped Grayson off a dance. I went back, got in my car, and I sat there. And I just started praying this out because I'm like, if it, if it stews in me, I'm going to just, I don't know what to do with all this. And so I just started praying. And I actually, I wrote it down. I want you to hear what came out of my mouth because I know it was the Holy Spirit. And I also know I've been chewing on this, okay? But I want you to hear the tone It says, God, we gave you our yes. We are being obedient to what you have spoken to us. We are here because you put me here. So I'm going to lean into that yes and allow you to cover us here. I will not worry or fear. 
And I will call my heart, call my heart, and remember that you did not bring us out to leave me here. And you know what happened to my heart is it expanded. God is always expansive. And any time you have anything in your life that's trying to get you to clam up, it is not the Lord. Okay, hear me. If you have emotions, if you've got situations and you're like, it just turns you into a ball of stress, pray it out. And the beautiful thing about God is as you're taking his yes it's not like life's perfect. In fact, sometimes life gets harder. You give God some yeses, sometimes it'll get harder. But you know what? It's where you get to lean back and you get to put his name on the line because you brought me here. And because you put me here and I said yes to you, you've got to back me up and you've got to pave a way where there is no way. And so you get to pull on the favor and the blessing of God and say, meet me here, because I didn't take this step without you. You brought me here. So I don't know what's going to happen in this situation, but I know God's got it. And it means that I just get to carry my way through. And God, wherever you go, I'm not taking a step till I know it's from you. Because then I get to put him on, him on, the, on the buck, man. I get to put God on the bill. He's going to sign his name to this. I'm not. All I got to do is stay submissive and obedient and follow the Holy Spirit's leading. And when I do that, blessing and favor will always be attached. See, as pastors of this church, we know that hope points favor. It's directly connected to our willingness to say yes. That's why Justin said it during offering. Whatever needs come our way, we say yes. We're just going to say yes. I'll always feed the children, take care of the orphans and the widows. We're going to do whatever we can do because our favor is connected to it. When God says, can I trust you with this? Our answer is yes. I don't know how we're going to do it. There's so many things we do in this church. And I'm like, I don't know how we're going to do this. But God called us to it. He, he brought it to us. So it is my honor. Jesus, yes, you already have our yes. Send it my way. We'll figure it out. So this is individual and it is corporate. Here's number two. You will go farther than you could ever go by yourself. When you say yes to Jesus, your yes will carry you farther than you could ever get by yourself. See, what's the currency of heaven? I heard a pastor ask this one time and I, I really just had to stop and think. The streets are paved in gold. So don't think God has a money issue. I already know God's not after our money. So what is God after? Well, what did he give his son for? People. People are the currency of heaven. It is what Jesus died and bled for was people. So on the other side of every yes that you give, there's a person. You need to know that not every yes that you give is about you. I don't know if y'all heard me on that. When God prompted our hearts 10 years ago to start a church and Josh and I came together after a year, we both thought we were crazy. Am I hearing this right? After a year, the Lord had been speaking to our hearts individually. I said, I just keep feeling this and I don't know what this is. And he looks at me and says, well, I've been feeling it too and thought you'd never do that. Like, We surrendered it right there, gave God our yes. And guess what? You're connected to that yes. You're connected to all the blessing and favor that's come with that yes. And you're also connected, sorry, to all the lack and hardship and, oh, my gosh, what are we doing? You're in all of that. Everything that you do, there's a person attached to it. Give you another example. The Lord prompts you. Thanksgiving's coming up. And we all know you never talk about what two things at Thanksgiving? Politics and religion. It's a good thing y'all aren't religious. Okay. (laughs) Thanksgiving's coming up. Families get a little tense. Nobody likes doing it. We should all do Friendsgiving. We'd have so much more fun. I'm sorry. (laughs) Forgive me. Um, 
Thanksgiving's coming up. Things get a little tight, and the Lord prompts you and says, hey, I need a yes from you. I need you to forgive them before you go. So that's your yes. But on the other side of that yes, you've got family restoration. Are you going to give God your yes? He's always going to ask you things. Maybe he asked you to serve here at church or go on an outreach. Get out of your comfort zone and know it'll be okay. Because you get the blessing, the blessing of obedience, and you also get to change someone's life. It's a win-win. Giving God your yes will take you farther than you could ever get by yourself. You will get put into rooms that you have no business being in. You will get connected with people you never thought you'd get connected with. And it will take you beyond where you ever thought you could get by yourself. But he needs your yes. He is not a genie. He is your God. He is your father. And all he wants is for you to say yes with a willing heart. And he will take you further. That's why I don't get when Christians say that being a Christian is boring. And I'm like, then you are doing it wrong. Because it is exciting and it will take you places and you will do things that you thought, I would never do this. How did I get here? I'll tell you how you got there. It was God. Watch him redeem your family. Watch him restore your marriage. All because you gave him your yes. And you didn't give it just once, but you gave it every single day. Watch what he'll do. Watch how far you'll go. The third one is this. Saying yes changes generations. I preach about generations a lot because I'm obsessed. I love the generational aspect of God and his nature and how it carries forward. But I want to end you with one story here today. And it's a story about Ruth and Naomi. It's a pretty common uh, book of the Bible. And so I'm going to give you kind of a little synopsis here. But basically, um, there were a lot of bad rulers in the land at the time. And they withheld food from their people. And they had an all-out famine. And so after years and years of famine... Um, Ruth and her sister-in-law, Orpha, both had lost their husbands. Pretty much any man who either went to war, did some, there's just a lot of death, a lot of famine, a lot of despair. And so their mother-in-law, Naomi, as a part of biblical culture, would have had their, um, her daughter-in-laws remarry within their family. Okay, that's what they would have done just so they would have been cared for. Well, all the men in their family had died. You've literally got these three women left, which is like an absolute death sentence at this time. There's no one to provide, no one to take care of them. They were completely left out on their own. So out of their whole family lineage, you've got these three women. Um, Naomi claims in Ruth 1 that her spirit was so crushed by the pain of loss. She said, just call me bitter. Like, can you imagine getting to a stage in your life where you're like, my name doesn't even matter anymore. I'm just bitter. And that's where Naomi found herself. So the famine worsened. Naomi had heard of a place in Moab where the Lord had grace with food. And she's like, I'm going to go there. I have some family there. I'm just going to make my way over there. She turns to Ruth and Orpha and she says, go back to your families. Just go back to where you came from. I'm fine. I'm going to make my way over here. And so Orpha, the Bible says, went back to her family. So she left, and Ruth gives a response to Naomi that forever changed her life. And you find that in Ruth chapter 1, 16 and 18. It says, but Ruth said, do not urge me to leave you or to return from following you. For where you go, I will go, and where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord do so to me, and more also, if anything but death parts you from me. And when Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more. Ruth gave a yes to Naomi that was costly and unknown. Ruth had no idea how that journey was going to play out, but she gave her her yes. 
So they continue on together. Ruth goes to work in the fields of a man named Boaz. I'm sure y'all have heard the story. Goes to work for a man named Boaz, and Ruth works all day and cares for Naomi. It says that she would bring her food home at night. Again, Ruth is giving her yes in a very unfair and unasked for situation. She didn't ask for any of that. She asked to be happily married into a family in another place. That's what she gave her yes to. But you know, life sometimes will throw you curveballs, and you got to say yes to stuff you just didn't see coming. So that's where Ruth finds herself. Later in the story, Naomi positions Ruth to win the heart of Boaz, and soon after they are married, changing their family lineage forever. Ruth 4, 13. It says, so Boaz took Ruth, and she became his wife. The Lord enabled her to conceive, and she gave birth to a son. The women, woman said to Naomi, praise be to the Lord, who this day has not left you without a guardian redeemer. May he become famous throughout Israel. He will renew your life and sustain you in old age. For your daughter-in-law who loves you and who is better to you than seven sons. Remember, all she wanted was a son. She wanted her sons to live. And here they are claiming that Ruth is better than seven sons. She's Because she has given him birth. Then Naomi took the child in her arms and cared for him. The women li living there said, Naomi has a son. They named him Obed, and he was the father of Jesse, the father of David. So the last two things I want to give you here. They said Naomi had had a son, but Naomi didn't have a son. Ruth had a son. See, when you give your yes to Jesus, you got to realize that the kingdom of God is so much bigger than just your yes. Because when you win, I win. And when your family's redeemed, my family's redeemed. That we're connected. When you give your yes to Jesus, it is an invitation to change generations. Amen. See, Naomi had no legacy. Ruth had no children. And because she gave her yes to a bitter woman... They now find themselves in the lineage of Jesus Christ himself. You might have missed it there, but it goes Ruth to Obed, to Jesse, to David, and all the way to Jesus. I think she's one of four women in the lineage of Jesus himself. All because she gave a yes. Give your yes. See, your yes changes generations. On a church level, Hope Point is going to change generations. This generation and the generations to come. Our kids are going to love Jesus. And I don't know what we're going to do, but I know that we're standing here in this field with our seed in our hand, dreaming of this forest and what it looks like. And all I see when you want to talk about my forest, it's families restored. It's kids who actually like church and want to go and don't want to be drug. But they want to go and they want to worship and they want to lead. And it's kids who know the word of God. And when they go to college, they don't get warped by the world's crap. Come on, man. But they stay in the truth of knowing who they are and who God created them to be. When you give your yes to Jesus and you throw out your seed and you nurture it, God will change your generations to come. Give him your yes. Because your favor is attached to it. It'll take you farther than you ever wanted to go. And it will change your generations. Yeah. Say yes to Jesus and don't belittle your little simple yes to a limitless God. Because he will do it. Would you stand up with me? We're going to pray. Father God, I thank you for what you're doing in this place today. And Lord Jesus, I thank you that you are good. God, that you watch over us. That you watch over every seed, every thought, every yes that we give you, Father. God, I know that you will give us everything that you promised. God, it says that you withhold no good thing. So, Lord Jesus, I thank you for every person in this room. And I pray that this week is going to be full of yeses. 
God, as families and as husband and wife start giving yeses to you, Lord Jesus, I pray that you would come and that you would just seal it in your Holy Spirit. God, as you lead and as you guide, Father, that we would hear you. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would talk to their hearts so loudly this week that there is no doubting what you have said. God, that we will know your voice and that we will follow it. And a stranger's voice we will not follow. So, Lord God, as we take steps of yes, I thank you for just ordering our steps. That this life is not supposed to be one of confusion and chaos, but, Father, that it is you are a God of order. So, God, I pray right now that you would come and that you would make right what has been scattered that you would bring into order the things that we thought were lost and gone. That, Lord Jesus, that you have our yes. Help it come out of our hearts easy. That it would not be like the child, Father, throwing a fit where we finally just say yes in bitterness. But, Father, that you would get willing, obedient, and submissive hearts. Father, we thank you for what you're going to do and what you're going to work in our, in our moments of just saying yes to you. With every head bowed and every eye closed, I just want to give you a moment. If you've never met Jesus, you need to today. And you know it because your heart's probably pounding a little bit and you're saying, I don't even know really who she's talking about. And all I can tell you is this, is religion will never work, but relationship will. And Jesus said that he came to this life to be in relationship with you. And he wants to live in your everyday moments. He wants to do life with you and help you and be your friend and your God. So yes, heaven is wonderful and it's going to be great. But honestly, it's between here and there where I need Jesus now. And so if you would like to have a real relationship with him, I invite you to raise your hand and I'm going to pray with you. Thank you. Thank you. Church, would you repeat after me? Dear Heavenly Father, I give you my heart. I give you my days. And I ask that you would come and be my God. Be my father and my friend. And that from here to heaven, you would come and live with me. Jesus, I give you everything that I have. And I ask that you have your way in my heart. In your name I pray. Amen. Would you give them all a hand, please? And I'll let you close. Awesome. Let's appreciate Pastor for giving us a great word today. Isn't it wonderful? Just a big yes. Amen. Great job. We loved it. Loved it, loved it. Well, we want to invite our prayer team to come forward. And if you have any desires, any needs that are in your life that you'd like somebody to pray with you about, you know, sometimes it dawns on me that folks are aware of their own unqualified state as they get ready to pray. And I think about the times that people came to Jesus and yelled from afar off. They weren't even close to him. They just yelled from afar off and said, Son of David, which was a moniker of his, have mercy on me. You know, sometimes you just begin with mercy, right? And when you pray, have mercy, Jesus says, come. And then he asks, what do you want? And then, of course, we get this amazing text in Hebrews 4 that we're to come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. I'm telling you, as you have needs today. If you'll come down and have one of these prayer partners pray with you, they're going to lead you in the throne of grace to receive the mercies. You're... Your disqualified status is not actual. It's not reality. It is an attempt of the enemy to keep you, keep you separated. And so I'm going to pray. I'll dismiss this. And then at the conclusion of that, if you'll come down to the front, 
They'll pray with you, and we'll watch God do supernatural things in your life. Let's pray. Father, thank you for being such a good God, that all your promises are truly yes and amen. It's never sometimes yes, sometimes no, and sometimes not now. But Jesus, you absolutely confirmed the will of God in redemption on the cross. And we remind ourselves that as we come boldly to the throne of grace, the Lord, you have already paid the price for every good and perfect gift being bestowed upon our lives. Thank you that you're the author and the finisher. You're the beginning and the end, and we receive it. Thank you in Jesus' name. And everybody who agreed with that said, Amen. God bless you guys. Turn and shake hands with somebody, and you are dismissed. I can't believe you came through at the end of myself. It's where I found you. When I was hiding, you called me. I am like the same. You are like the same. Thank you.